I don't know whether I need to introduce Flavia at all. I mean, she's been in the movement, women's movement in Bombay since 1980, since the founding of Forum Against Oppression. Okay, or Forum, what was it called? <laughs> and uh, she's contributed to uh, very imaginative and creative understandings of law, especially relating to women and minorities, and has molded some of the laws relating to women. And uh, her writings or her books on law are like uh, handbooks for many of us who deal with these issues. And they are readable as well as scholarly. I thank Kusha for having me here, though I was taken by surprise. Uh, I did not know I was going to be on the panel, so I don't have a lecture on submission. Also, I think all of us have come here to hear uh, Binayak and Elida uh, more so, and we also had a scholarly legal uh, presentation by me. So I, I, and he exposed to us what the submission law is all about and what are the, the intent of the law and its First, it is intent of misuse of the law, in fact. Uh, all I want to say is that um, Binayak, all of us are very grateful to you. We are with you in this struggle. And uh, Elena, I, I, we understand the struggle that you've gone through. And uh, the moments uh, of despair, the moments of extreme pain and anguish, when, we, when one doesn't know actually what uh, the future holds for us. And particularly after the conviction came through, one didn't expect the conviction to happen. We expected a course to have much more restraint and a much more a legalistic understanding of what the law is and for the manner in which democratic rights can be governed by this law. And we expected the courts to have that kind of understanding, but unfortunately, uh, it, it's just a glaring example for us that uh, when you say the separation of powers are there and courts will offer the checks and balances uh, in order to protect democratic rights, suddenly you feel the entire system has failed. It's failed in Gujarat. We all know what happened in Gujarat, how the courts did not act, how the uh, executive did not act, how the politicians did not act. So when actually constitutional um, system itself breaks down, uh, and people have no other option except to be seditious in defense of the common people. I think that's where these laws have come up and uh, have this very draconian power. What I want to say here is that um, while we know it, we understand it theoretically. We know the possibility that this can happen. And somewhere we, have, we live in a belief that we live in a system uh, or we, ha we belong to a particular class of people where it will not directly affect us. It always happens to others, others out there, you know. Uh, and we will be the protected and privileged class. But what, what has happened, and you can see this large gathering gathered here today, when it's happening to Binay, when it's happening to Elena, it is, it's coming so close to us. It's like happening to one of us, it's happening to the family. Uh, and, and that is what makes it uh, really scary that today it can be Vinay, today it can be Elena, today it can be their daughter, it can be anybody. And the fear that was expressed again and again, not only by the seditious laws, but even through other means. Uh, and taking any, any um, rule in a statute book, uh, when, you, when you are uh, being observed, with, with that kind of microscopic glare by the state, any every step that you can you take maybe can be a wrong step, and you're constantly living under this fear. Whether you're organizing a meeting, when you are holding a seminar, it can be anything. Something may may not fit in the rule book, and then the state can come in, and so you're constantly living under this fear that something may happen to me just just because the state wants to prove a point, and this is where the power of the state. When we talk about democracy, people's power, people's right to struggle, suddenly when you realize when the state wants to act, the state can act, and there's every single instrument for the state to act within the realm of law. You don't have to go outside of the realm of law. And that is what I think uh, for all of us, the minutes and case as it, as it is, has brought to light. That what kind of level of uh, uh, fear that one can live, what kind of uh, some, Suspension of democratic rights, the suspension of freedom. All these we write about, we theorize, we articulate these terms, we give lectures on this, but when it does actually happen to one, how does 
one respond? And who are the people with you? And what kind of struggle that is uh, that is uh, needed? Uh, when when Vinay Sen introduced himself to me, he says, "I'm Vinay Sen." And somebody said, the whole nation knows you. All of us have posters in our office. All of us have posters everywhere. Vinak Sen's face has been, I think, a face for democracy. Uh, uh, it's sort of a mirror of the state to show what the, uh, what democracy in India is. Uh, Some time ago, there was a meeting in Bombay where I was asked to speak on Pakistan and blasphemy laws. We feel very good when we're discussing about uh, Pakistan, when we're discussing about blasphemy laws over there, and we feel we in India, you know, look at Pakistan, look at what they do. You know, you say one word about religion, and this is what this is this can happen to you. But I mean, we need to connect it. What can happen to us if the state wants? Because it's not only that Pakistan has this law, but we have equally draconian laws, and the state can do this. And when Vinay Singh's study was going full swing. We felt that it, it was important for us to discuss blasphemy uh, laws in Pakistan, and, and then making the, unless we make the necessary connection, it's always um, we at least as a Pakistan neighbors, we're always feeling so good about ourselves. We're always backing ourselves in the back. We're not like them, but we, we're not like them. But we are something else. We can be worse because our state can be equally strong if not worse. And it is important for us to bring these threads together. It's important for us to also understand what. A family goes through. What kind of trauma the entire family suffers? And for us, it is very important. Um, thank you, uh, Elena, and thank you, Virat, for for being there and showing this mirror to the state and showing this mirror to all of us. And 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 enduring this pain and this trauma for months on end, and it's going on and on for a long period of time. All I can tell you, say at this moment is, to the extent is possible, we are with you. And we understand his pain. We understand his struggle. And all we can say is thank you. Thank you for doing this for all of us. Thank you, Flavia, for speaking a uh, completely different angle, as always. And talking about Pakistan and blasphemy laws, uh, we should also remind ourselves that when the Maligao blast accused Colonel Purohit and one of his assistants, was produced in a Pune court. They were showered with rose petals by people over there, and we were shocked when Tarsir, when the murderer of Tarsir in Pakistan, was showered with rose petals. We had done it before then. Um, I now call Ina Sen.